Each edit that pops up on your For You page has the same cool text animation. And they all get millions of views too. Surely this isn't a coincidence. If only I knew how to make it so I can finally go viral. After this video, you will exactly know how to make this awesome text animation in After Effects so you can finally prevent your edits from looking like they've been made on CapCut. First of all, you're gonna need two clips. In my case, I wanna edit LeBron James. And now the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna adjust the size of our clip that we later wanna have fade up. In my case, it's gonna be the top clip. So I'm just gonna click onto that, press S on my keyboard and now scale it down till it fits my liking. For my edit, I'm gonna go roughly to 62%. Once that's done, we're next gonna add this cool line, which obviously is essential for this effect. Just head to the top row and under layer, select new, click solid. And now very important, leave these settings how they are, but change the color of the solid to the color that you want your line to be in. In my case, I want red, so I'm gonna put it to red. Press OK and OK again. As you can see, your whole clip is now covered with the red solid layer. And because obviously in our case, we wanna use this thin, well actually average sized line, we're gonna have to make some adjustments to this layer. Start by clicking onto the layer, pressing S on your keyboard and unchecking this little checkbox next to the values. This just enables you to stretch the text individually, horizontally, and vertically. So we can now make it thin, thick, average, whatever we want. Now go to the very first frame of the clip that we later want to have fade up and set a keyframe for the scaling. Now put the value on the left to zero and the one on the right we're going to put to one. Now drag your time marker to where you want your text to be fully faded up and put the second value up to 100. As you can see, we now have our line and now we can just delete the axis part. So just go to the beginning before the first keyframe starts and press Ctrl, Shift, and D at the same time. Now delete this extra part. And next we're going to select our layer again and press U. This will bring up both the keyframes and we're now going to select both of them, right click, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Now what this does, it basically enables us to change the graph of our animation, meaning we can make it go fast, slow, whatever we like. And to now actually change this, we're going to select both the keyframes and open the graph editor. Once that's done, we should be faced with this window. And now very important, make sure to right click on here and select edit speed graph instead of value graph. Now it will look slightly different and we're just going to go ahead and now drag ahead these yellow handles slightly to the middle. Let's go about 60% for each side. Once that's done, close the graph editor again. And now obviously we're going to need two lines, one at the top, one at the bottom. So we're going to duplicate this layer and therefore have it twice. Click onto your layer, press Ctrl and D on your keyboard. And as you can see, when we press U to bring up the keyframes, it's the exact same thing. Now next, we're going to add the movement to the line so they actually move out of the middle. For that, we're just going to use normal positioning keyframes. So just go ahead, select the first line, press P on your keyboard, right click onto the window that says position and select separate dimensions. This way, the X and Y positioning get unlinked, meaning we can individually change them and therefore also adjust the graphs. And obviously, because our line will only move vertically, we're only going to focus on changing the Y value. So go ahead to the first frame and set a keyframe for the Y value. Now go ahead to where your animation ends. Now zoom in onto your clip and then just increase the Y value until it fits the edge of your clip. Just like this. Make sure it's nice and aligned. And now the same step we're gonna apply for the other clip, but reverse. Because this time it has to move up. Like my aggression when I see CapCut editors. Just kidding. Anyway, to now do that, we're gonna select the same clip. Do the same procedure over again. Press P on our keyboard to bring up the positioning keyframes. Right click onto it. Go to separate dimensions. Head to the first frame of our clip and set a keyframe for the Y value. Now again, go to where you want your animation to end, which is right here. And now instead of increasing Increasing, slowly decrease the value till it's also aligning with the clip. Again, make sure it's nice and aligned. Now for the graphs, you might have guessed, we're also going to change them again because at the moment it doesn't look good. So just select all of the keyframes at once, right click, go to keyframe assistance and hit easy ease. Open the graph editor and now we're going to apply the same graphs we did for the scales earlier. So just click onto the graph and drag it slowly till it's at 60%. It doesn't have to be spot on 60, but go around that range. Once that's done, we also want to make sure to move these positioning keyframes a bit ahead because we don't want them to happen at the same time as our scaling animation. So again, just select all of them and drag them a bit ahead till it fits your expectations. Once that's done, make sure to look and see if you didn't mess up anything with the we graphs, the which in my case looks fine. And, I... and once that's done, we can advance to animating our footage. And now what we're gonna do to animate our clip is simply just using mass. If you don't know what that means, don't worry, I'll show you. What we need to do before we start is duplicate our base clip. So just go ahead, click onto it and press Ctrl and D again. As you can see, you now have it twice. And now what I would recommend you doing is enabling the proportional grid. So just click onto this little box and click onto proportional grid, which will help us detect the right proportion. Next, go to the top and select the rectangle tool. This will just help you make a completely symmetrical mask. And now what we're going to do is select one of the clips, in my case, the top one. And then we're going to create a mask from the middle of the screen, which is this green line you can see on our proportional grid, all the way to the end of our clip. So just go ahead and make it all the way to the top. Make sure it's aligned with the edge of your clip. And now we're going to do the same thing reverse for the other clip. So go ahead, now select the bottom clip, go back to the rectangle tool, and then start from the middle of the clip again. Just draw a nice rectangle and make it fill out the rest of the clip. Just like this. Now very important, check if it's aligned with the center line. If it's not, don't worry, just double click onto the line and then slowly drag it down till it fits. Just like this. This is very important. Now zoom out again. And as you can see, as of now, this looks totally normal. But what we basically did is split the clip into half. So if you now disable one of the clips, you can see only half of it is left. And now to make the animation, we're just gonna use a mask path. So go okay, onto the top layer, press M on your keyboard to bring up the mask settings and set a keyframe at the exact same place where we have our positioning keyframe ending, which is for me right here. So go ahead and set a keyframe for the mask path. Now go back to 
where this animation starts, which is right here. And now, as we did before, zoom in on the mask, double click onto the edge of it, and I'll drag it all the way down till it's invisible, just like this. And now, the same thing as always, we're gonna reverse on the other clip. So go ahead, now select the bottom clip, press M to bring up the mask settings, and start by putting a keyframe to where we want our animation to be finished, right here. Select the mask path again, and then go back to where we want the animation to start. Double click onto the edge of the mask, and drag it up till it's invisible. Now, very, very important, we have to apply the same graphs that we used earlier for the positioning keyframe. Because they have to go hand in hand and need to be aligned to each other. Just keep that in mind. So we're gonna go ahead, select all the keyframes again, right click, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Press F9 if you're lazy. And now we're gonna open a graph editor and start by increasing the value to the exact same we had earlier. So put it to 60%. Do this for both graphs. Now we can close the graph editor again. Also disable the proportional grid again and hit the grid instead. Click on the box and select proportional grid. Now when we play our clip now, you can see no, it already no, looks very, very close. And then I but wait, we're not right done yet. These next settings are going to be the most important ones because we're going to add some fine tunes. And obviously, the most important thing, our text. We're going to start by duplicating both of our red solid layers. So just go ahead, click one by one and press Ctrl and D. Go to the next one and also press Ctrl and D. Now you should have a total of four solid layers and we're now going to pre-compose both the duplicated ones. So go to the one at the very top, right click, go to pre-compose, select this bottom option and enable this check mark. Press OK and do the same one for the other one we duplicated, which for me is the third one. Click onto it, right click, pre-compose, select these both options and press OK. Now to make it look a bit cooler, we're gonna add the Turbulent Displays effect. Go to your Effects and Presets panel and search for Turbulent Displays. Drag it onto the first layer, put the amount from 50 up to 200 and the size from 100 down to 5. As you can see, this added this cool distortion kind of look to it, which in my opinion looks really great. Now copy this effect by clicking on it and pressing Ctrl and C on your keyboard and go to the other pre-composed layer. Click onto it and press Ctrl and V to paste it. As you can see, you have it applied to both layers now. And next, we're gonna add some cool effects to make it stand out even more. So now go ahead and pre-compose all the four layers. Do that by selecting all of them at once and doing the same procedure. Select all of them, right click, go to pre-compose, both settings and press OK. Now the effects are going to make a huge difference, just watch. We're going to start by adding deep glow, so just go ahead and search for deep glow, drag it onto the layer. Now put the radius from 500 down to 300 and the exposure from 1 to 0 0.3. Next we're going to add a drop shadow, so go ahead and search for drop shadow, drag it onto the layer, put the opacity from 50 up to 100, the distance from 5 to 10 and the softness from 0 to 15. Now last but not least, we're going to add the bevel alpha effect, so just search for that. And now very important, drag it to the left and your effects control and above the deep glow effect, not below it. Now put the edge thickness from 2 to 4. Now you have to decide how long your animation is gonna be. For me, I wanna cut it after this place, so I'm just gonna select all the clips and then press Ctrl Shift and D and delete the excess parts. Now we can go ahead, select all these layers and pre-compose them together. So just press right click, pre-compose, select these two options and press OK again. Now what I always like to add to this animation is a smooth zoom in and the rotation. So to now add the animations, go to where you want them to start, press S on your keyboard to move up the scaling property, set a keyframe at 100 where you want it to start, then go to where you want it to be finished and set the value up to how much you want to scale. I usually like to use around 110, but it's up to you. Now select these two keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistance, hit easy ease so we can adjust the graphs again, open the graph editor, and again we're going to copy the same graphs that we used earlier on all the other animations. So put it to roughly 60%, and once that's done on both sides, you can close the graph editor again and do the same thing over for the rotation. So go to that same place in time, press R this time to bring up the rotation property, set a keyframe at the beginning, leave it at zero, and then go to where you want it to end. And I usually like to put the value to negative 3. Now the process is going to be the exact same as with the scaling, so just select them, easy ease them, open the graph editor and put both the values down to 60%. Once that's done, again close the graph editor and now look at it. Now just go ahead, select all the keyframes, copy them by pressing Ctrl and C on your keyboard, then go to the bottom clip, which you can see in the background, and then press Ctrl and V to paste them. And now last but not least, we obviously have to add our text. There's lots of different text variations that you could add. In my case, I'm going to use this clean fading up text. So go to wherever your text is supposed to start, head to the top row and click the text icon. Now click onto your screen and type in whatever your character says. Make sure to open the align tool on the right and then click on align horizontally and vertically. Now as you can see the text is in the middle of the screen and for the text effects I like to use the same ones that we used for the line. So double click onto your pre-composition, select the one where the lines are in and copy all the effects from here. Press Ctrl and C, go back to your main composition and paste them onto the text. Now go to where the text is supposed to start, press Ctrl Shift and D to cut the text layer and then delete the excess part. Head to your effects and presets panel and search for slow fade on. This is a standard preset integrated with an after effect and now just drag it onto your clip. Once that's done, your text should disappear. So now bring it up again, press Z on your keyboard, and you should see that on your text there are now two keyframes, which the first one is going to declare the start, and the second the end of the animation. Meaning that at the second one, the text is going to be fully visible. So now just go ahead and drag it to where you want your text to be fully visible, which in my case is going to be around here. And now last but not least, make sure to add a good color correction. Because as you can see, adding a good color correction can increase the quality of your edits immensely. So it's an absolute necessity for every new editor to get themselves a good color correction. It can help make your edits look from low quality, extremely choppy, to 
high quality, extremely smooth. So it's something you definitely don't want to leave out. If you know one that we can get such a color correction, make sure to hit the first link in the description because I'm still currently running a huge sale on my shop. You can get all my presets for up to 70% cheaper. So it's a good opportunity and absolutely no brainer for every new editor. Make sure to not miss out. And once all these steps are done, take a final look at no, your results. in the neighborhood. And then, no, I was in the neighborhood. And now to render this edit, make sure to watch this video. And in all seriousness, I really appreciate you for watching. Make sure to check out my channel if you want to see more After Effects tutorials. With that being said, have a good rest of your day. Assalamu alaikum and see you next time.